Hi, welcome back. Today we're importing a virtual machine with a website running on it and we are going to try to upload a web shell and we're going to try to run, on, run a privilege escalation exploit. The privilege escalation exploit will allow us to create a name pipe and remotely connect into the system. Actually, we don't even need the privilege escalation exploit to do that. So let's go ahead and check it out. Over here we've got the crime net. It's loaded. So this is on, a, on the virtual machine. And the virtual machine is running Linux. So if we want to just uh, bring that up really fast and connect up to it, I can pop over here and log into the machine. And it's just a virtual machine. And so if we go over here and type free-m, we're only using 146 meg of RAM. So if anybody's wondering, can you use Linux Mint as a server? Absolutely, it usually runs without a desktop at about 128 to 146 megabytes of RAM. So it's about the overhead. So over here, back to CrimeNet, we want to upload a file. We're going to choose web shell. Now a web shell is just the way it sounds. It gives you a shell. Now we need to figure out where that file got uploaded so we can then reference it. Now it says over here it went to the uploads directory and could they have put it in the uploads directory? I think they did. And of course, since we built this machine, we know they did. Okay, there we go. And we've got crypto wallets that have been uploaded in a web shell there. Look at that. We've got a crypto wallet. We can click on that and look at that. So we have people who have uploaded things. Of course, those are all fake, right? Um, and we have this web shell that's also been uploaded to the uploads directory. Now, there are two problems with this. They did not validate their inputs, so they're allowing you to upload PHP files. And next, they're allowing you to see the contents of this directory. That's problematic. However, even if we could not see the contents of the directory because we know the name webshell.php, we might be able to call the file anyway without seeing the contents of the directory. So that'd be kind of cool. Well, let's go ahead and run this. Fantastic. Web shell's running great. So now if we're commands, we can go over here and run commands and execute. There you go. Right. We can do anything. We can look at, you know, the entire system. We can cat Etsy password. In fact, you'll see that in there where I've done that before just earlier. And uh, all of this stuff, right? We, we have access to the box as a almost a regular user object. We're actually logged in as www-data which if www-data cannot log in oh my goodness well what are we doing it there can't log in well i guess i guess we're toast then we, there's no wait wait we are doing this ah okay so what's going on here is this web shell is running as this user and even though this user can't log in it can talk to the web server and the web server is running this web shell PHP, and so we're able to see things there. Now that we've been able to do this, it's like, well, I tell you what, let's go ahead and upload an exploit. So let's go over here and go browse. We'll choose this Linux exploit. We'll choose open, start the upload. It says an upload, and I know that it's the uploads directory, so we'll go right over to the uploads directory. Now, I'll go to web shell. Now with web shell, I'm going to go ahead and do the ls-lh, make sure that our exploit is up, and there is our Linux exploit. It made it, and we got web shell right there as well. So now is the creation of a named pipe, so we can connect back into it. Well, actually, if, if you want to stop here and say, okay, I got the web shell uploaded, then you can go ahead and stop here. If you want to get the web shell, mine's only slightly modified. Uh, you can go online and look for web shells and uh, PHP web shells or whatever the back end that you're using would require. Mine requires a PHP web shell. And of course, you can run those web shells. Now, over here, we've got uh, this Linux exploit web shell right there. I'm going to go ahead and make first in, first out, connect. In fact, we can run this whole command. We're going to try that. Now, what I found last time is that it takes just a second to make this uh, this named pipe connect right there. So I'm going to give it a sleep statement after that, and then I'm going to try to cat connect to it. So we're going to create a first in, first out named pipe connect, and then we are going to go through and cat that into bash, sending bash into netcat, 
and sending that cat back over to connect. That's very circular, it is. And so what we're doing here is we're running a netcat listener that is taking the information from Ben Bash and showing it on the screen and then sending whatever we do back into connect, which sends that back into Ben Bash. So the very first thing is, well, with this one, uh, as the netcat listener is feeding information to connect, when we first connect, you won't actually see anything. So you actually have to type a command. And then after you type command, then it'll bring that name pack, named pipe, and that will pipe right into bin bash, run the command for it for us, and then show us the uh, the command on the screen. Let's see if this works. Okay, that is looking great. Now, now what you see, what we're looking at up here is this dot running back and forth. If we've got that, that is a good deal. So I'm gonna bring up a terminal and we're gonna run over here with this terminal and I'll just uh, do this. No, S, not SSH, sorry, netcat to 182.168.56.101.8080. All right, look at that. And I'll make this a little bit larger for everybody. So it says that we are connected and we are connected as www-data. Now, remember the www-data does not have a, um, a login shell. So here we are in, uh, in the shell. So hold on, it's like, hey, you can't have a shell. And it's like, well, here we are. Well, we do have a shell. So we can run it over here and we can look at directory contents. We can pretty much do whatever we want. So we can do same thing we could do um, from the uh, from the web shell we can do now from this netcat. But that's not why we're here, right? We wanted this shell right here so that we can run this exploit, this Linux exploit. So we're gonna tar XVZF and we're gonna do that Linux exploit tape archive GNU zipped and we're gonna unzip that and as we unzip that, we're going to pop into the Linux exploit directory there that was created. We'll look inside that directory. We've got some, some stuff here. And it says, okay, well, there's the there's a file, so we'll run that one. And it's like, hey, you need to pick the right version over here. You need to pick the right version. So let's do a sudo dash capital V. And it says that we are version 1831. And that is version 1831 right there. And the option is 1. So it wants us to go sudo hacks me a sandwich with option one right there. We'll press enter and let's type who am I? Look at that. We are now root. So now we can do a user add. Yeah, go ahead and create, go ahead and make the home directory if it doesn't exist, right? Um, let's give ourselves a shell, bin bash, and we will uh, create a comment. We'll say this is antivirus software. Um, Add ourselves to sudo group and we'll call ourselves antivirus like that now we'll type pass wd antivirus new password 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 done okay if everything worked properly we should now be able to log in as antivirus so we'll go ssh antivirus at that web server 192.168.56.101 with a password of password and here we are we are now logged in with an interactive shell so we have done all of this just through their web vulnerability and so we've got full access to the system now i say full access sudo dash s yes full access so who am i yeah we're now root so we can go through and do what we want we can look at everybody's home directory and uh, we can we can install utilities we want to. So you want to go search for something. You want to go find something. You know, go look for your applications. Whatever you can do, whatever you want on this system. So that's full access. I hope that this has been helpful, and I look forward to talking to you again in the future. Uh, this is all there is to this. So uh, what we did is we went in and uh, found that website. Well, we imported the virtual machine. From the virtual machine, we went to the website, uploaded the malware in the web shell. We played with the web shell a little bit. And if you want to stop there and just say, hey, yeah, I've got the web shell to work, then that's okay. Um, if you want to go a little bit further and make a, uh, a named pipe, that's that 
MK first in first out MK FIFO and uh, connect or whatever you want to call it you can name it anything demo whatever you want to call it and then connect up to that so that you can then netcat into the server and run some commands as a user super if you want to take it a little bit further and run the privilege escalation exploit then that would be great right and then create a user account and then remotely log in to, as that user account so over here on the system we now have that user running and there it is got your antivirus software you may not want to remove your antivirus software so there you go <laughs> i hope that this has been helpful and i look forward to talking to you again in the future